In our previous video on the rope dart, we taught you some of the basic circles, figure eights, and some simple throws. This video, we're going to go over the more exciting advanced throws. I'll be starting with an upward outside circle. So you notice I have my right foot forward and I'm gonna be making this circle on the outside of my foot where the circle is traveling upward. It's easiest to do the throwing from an upward circle. So from here, I'm gonna throw it forward and retrieve it. And you'll notice all of a sudden it's a downward circle. But if I just change my orientation looking backwards, magically it turns into an upward circle. So then I can throw it and retrieve it, and as I turn, it's an upward circle. Throw it and retrieve it. I did a figure eight to help retrieve it that time. I'm throwing it behind me, throwing it in front of me. Throwing it behind me, I can throw it in front of me, bring it around like a figure eight, and then throw it behind me. So just getting a little bit fancier, but it's the same thing. Once I'm comfortable with that, I'm gonna start counting. So I'll go two circles. One, two, throw it forward and retrieve it. One, two, throw it behind me, retrieve it. One, two, retrieve it. One, two, retrieve it. One, two. When I'm comfortable with that, I can change it again. I'll go one circle, one circle, throw. One circle, throw. One circle, throw. One circle, throw. Throw. Again, we're just going to make it a little bit harder, so we're going to take the one circle out. To get it started, I might I could just swing it, but I might start with the circle just to get my momentum. But what I'm going to do is throw it forward, throw it backward, throw it forward, throw it backward, throw it forward, throw it backward. And you can see how I'm just using the momentum of the falling hammer to change what direction it's going. Now just some quick tips to make that part a little bit easier. Number one, if I'm swinging my circle and this rope hits the floor, all of a sudden it's changing direction and momentum of that hammer. So I wanna try not to let it hit things like the floor or my leg or the ceiling. Every little bit of that's gonna change what the hammer's doing. So a couple things we can do to prevent that is you see when I go to retrieve it, I lift this hand up high. And when I pull this down to my arm's length, you'll see how it's not going to be touching the floor. I'm actually a good six inches away from the floor right there. Now, another concern that I've had, especially when I'm training with it in my dojo, my ceiling's pretty high there, but this is an 11, 12 foot rope. So sometimes when I need to make this rope a little bit shorter, normally I just have this attached to my wrist and I'll hold the bottom of the rope this way. I get the full length of the rope in that manner. But if I needed to take up some, I can just do a single wrap around my hand here. Now when it comes to releasing the rope in a throw and I want to use the full length, I just release my grip and it just comes right off. I have the full length of that. If I wrapped it too many times, I'm not having a problem with it catching up. So that's it, is I'll just wrap it one time around my hand. Next, I'm gonna be talking about throwing with the foot. And we showed this one in the first video where I'm doing my downward circle and I just get the inside of my foot inside that circle. And you can see how all of a sudden it goes from this really big, relatively slow circle to all of a sudden fast and small. So that's changing my distance of my weapon, which can be very confusing to my opponent. But then what I'm going to do is just add this little flick of my toe. I'm going to feel that momentum of that circle on my foot. And then I flick my toe to throw it forward. And it's a little bit more than just the flick of the toe. But I'm also throwing a front kick at the same time. So the more power I get out of my foot along with the flick of that toe from that little circle to a straight line really fast. I'll show that again full speed. Going from my downward circle 
to my toe clicking forward. So besides throwing my foot forward, I should also be able to throw it backwards. So with that, I'm gonna be using this side kick. And again, it's when I'm doing my downward circle, I can feel the rope and my foot, and I can feel the momentum of that circle. So I'm gonna catch this on the inside of my foot when I feel the rope going backwards I have my side kick. And that makes the throw happen. Then it's just a matter of wherever I aim my side kick is where the rope's gonna go. Once you're comfortable with throwing the rope forward with your foot, throwing it backward with your foot, now you wanna try to do both tricks without the momentum of the hammer stopping. I'll be starting with this downward circle just to get, get the momentum started. I'm gonna use that little cross kick to throw it forward. A lot of times I like to retrieve them with that figure eight. Still facing this way, I'll catch it with my foot, throw it backward, and then retrieve it again. Woo, started to get away from me. Notice I'm now facing the other direction. I would throw it forward, and then I would throw it backward, and then I'd change directions. Throw it forward, throw it backward, change directions. You'll see with that last throw, it bounced off my wave master over here. Now, the one thing I want to point out, I'm in an indoor environment. I want to be careful. This isn't my living room because what if that was my television? Or your cat. Or my cat. Okay, so anyhow, I have these bags out. I'm trying to throw it right next to the bag right now. I'm not hit it. I'm testing my accuracy. Right there, what that told me is when I did that throw, my hammer got a little bit wild. But however, I can still use this as part of my practice because it bounced off of that wave master, started coming in this horizontal circle. So I was able to retrieve it and bounce it off my hip without it hurting me or completely losing my weapon. Also in the previous video, we talked about throwing with different body parts. For example, the elbow. I can take this downward circle that's normally a little more difficult to throw from, but if I put my elbow in front of it and I throw my elbow forward, that now changes it from that downward circle to a forward circle. And that's the one that we showed last time. However, I can also take this downward circle, I could put my elbow through it and throw it backwards. I'm actually kind of cheating because to backwards, that was an upward circle that I threw from. It just happened to be that I was facing this way for my downward, but then when you look, upward circle. And all I do is I just catch that momentum underneath my arm, and it just wants to wrap around my elbow. So I'm just feeling the momentum, and I'm gonna add my own to it, and I do a back elbow, and that launches it. So you can really see the value of this throw. I have this big circle. As soon as I stick my elbow through, it'll go fast, and then I change it to forward. Or maybe somebody's sneaking up on me, it changes really quick to a backward throw. And especially with the weight of that hammer, moving at that velocity could be devastating if it hit you in a vital area. The other throwing with the elbow, besides forward and backward, is throwing upward. Now you can see this really well in the demonstration that I did out there at Rogue X. They have this humong humongous basketball court, so I've probably good, got a good 50 feet to the ceiling. I'm not going to reach that with an 11, 12 foot rope. But in here, I've only got uh, maybe 11 feet total, and then with me standing here, if I throw this all the way up, I'm going to put holes in my roof. So in this case, I'm going to keep my rope a little bit shorter. But my upward throw is very similar to my backward throw or my forward throw. I'm just getting my downward circle going. I'll let it come around my elbow, but then I throw it upward. And the purpose for this upward throw is I'm trying to get this hammer as high up in the air as possible. And then once it reaches that point, gravity is going to start pulling it down. So I'm gonna to have to catch that momentum and change it to a circle that I use then for a downward throw.
This is another way I like to use my Wave Master to help me practice, and it's for accuracy. Right now I have this uh, height set up to be about the height of a small child. I don't know, maybe a 10 or 11 year old. I'm a pretty short guy. But my first goal is from right here, taking my throw, and can I just knock the ball off without hitting the heavy bag? Okay, that first throw, I missed it, but when I went to retrieve it, it wrapped around and hit it from the back. So to me, that's one of the great ways that this weapon was used. It's coming at you, you manage to get up and block it, or if you just dodge it a little bit, it's going to circle around in that horizontal circle and still catch you. I'm going to set that up again. When I set this up on the Wave Master, I just realized that the ball itself didn't want to stay. It wanted to roll off. So I ended up taking one of my dome cones, putting on there upside down, and then I stacked the ball on top. It all, almost works like a golf tee, and then it just sits there. So my first one, I was a little bit off with my aim. So how I want to get my aim is with my upward circle. I want to get to where that circle is crossing right through the middle of my target. And then when I go to release it, I want to stay on that target and knock it straight off. Boom, right in the middle. That was a good throw. Once I'm comfortable in hitting that target, I mean, that's a pretty good target to hit. That's the size of somebody's head or the chest or the stomach. So any part of the body, if I can hit that accurately, that's going to be pretty good for me. But now it's like, can I do that throw and not let the momentum stop and retrieve it? So what I would be doing is now changing and doing a double strike. So I would be hitting, I'm going to back up some, give myself some challenge. I'm going to come back here, hit the head target, retrieve it, use my foot to hit the body target. One, two. Then from there, I can start getting that faster. Hit it once, retrieve it once, throw it, boom. And just see how accurate and how quick I can get those strikes coming out. As with any skill, it takes practice and proper training to get good at it. So make sure you look for a good school in your area. If you're in Southern Oregon, contact us for our locations and times. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, like it and make sure to share that with a friend. Click the subscribe button and then hit that notification bell so you can catch our next exciting video.